Hello, I'm Tom Milk from the Bar Tipsy Lab and in this particular video we're going to look at the wonderful kick to the Jacob's Cream Crackers. We're going to go with the Chasse de Rire. So you see this in French kickboxing, so that Chasse de Rire, kick to the groin, you see it in Jiu Jitsu and we also see it in lots of the thuggish elements of pugilism too. Um, but I'm going to go with the French version for now. So what I'm going to do for the sake of the camera and where it's angled, I'm going to go with a side four guard just to make it easy for you to see. I know I'm naturally a southpaw, it's easier for me too, and I've got lots of rubble that way. So from our guard here, first thing we need to notice is, if we're going to kick to the groin, you've got to understand that most humans are really, really good at not being kicked in the groin. They're very ready for it, they're very aware about it. So we need to make sure we're using Kazushi, disruption, distraction, before we go in for that kick. Now, a couple of ones that I like. First one's very basic. If I distract up high, I can kick down low, nice and simple. So you've got physical kazushi, where I might point at someone. Who's that? I might just move my hand. So I might flick my hand nonchalantly over this way and then deliver the kick to the groin. I might use destructive words like, don't I know your mum? Uh, isn't your sister Tracy? You know, <laughs> whatever you're going to be. You have to be cognitively disruptive. You can be really aggressive, hyper-aggressive. You can swear and shout and mid-swear. You can land the kicking. So mid your stream of bile and vitriol, then you launch the kick. But try wherever you can to not just passively launch the kick but make sure you're using some degree of kazushi move your hands cause a faint cause a flick say something scream shout do whatever you need to do to temporarily disrupt that opponent with the kick itself a couple of different iterations of it so you've got the knee up so the knee chambered first and then aiming with the toes up um, so some of the guys say aim the toes behind the testicles so it goes straight up so knee up then kick So there's a small chamber. Some people do a little chamber, some people do a high chamber, but there's a chamber before the kick. Other people like to fire it straight up like I do. So straight up from the ground. Okay, either way, first get used to practicing some degree of kazushi. So I'm gonna use a hand feint. So from my pugilism guard, I'm gonna throw a feint, kind of lead off and then throw the kick. And again, this is meant to be snapping, it's meant to cause temporary pain. Don't get used to the idea that the groin kick is so super damaging, it ends the confrontation. Often it's just painful, but people can fight on, okay? And your tendency when you kicked in the groin is to come in on yourself, making you more compact. So, oh, but I can still fight from here, okay? To get used to the notion, you need to distract. Launch the kick in, best suits your different fighting art. I prefer straight up. Okay. Then immediately practice filling that gap. So I've got three different ways which I fill the gap after a chasse de rire. So one, throw the kick straight into a lead off blow. As soon as the kick lands, that then turns for me into a drop step and I launch out that particular punch. So from here, one, two, one, two. As soon as the foot comes down, I hit with this vertical fist into the neck, behind the ear, in the solar plexus, wherever. So from here, boom, 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 boom. So you chasse direct into a lead off blow. Second one, so that's quite extreme range. Bang, 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 bang. Making sure I've got a decent penetrative lunge on this as well. Okay. Second one is to use the Mousset, the palm heel strike. In this instance, I'm using it in my rear hand. So I'm kicking with my right leg, because that's my forward leg in this scenario. Boom, as I step, I'm probably a little bit closer to the opponent. I drive that Mousset in, keeping the elbow close to the body, drive it up, all my weight going forward and up. So from here. Notice a couple of things. Sorry, my eye. As I get closer to do the Mousset, I drop my head down because at any one point, he might be firing a counter attack. So as soon as I've landed that, my head's down to protect my face and my jaw. 
and to give them a hard target to hit before they strike up with that reset. So from here, boom, the head comes down a bit and ideally you want to be coming underneath the opponent's jaw with that. You can use the fingers in the eyes, but it's a right hand palm heel strike from so here. Straight up there. And then finally, it's extreme range. In extreme range, use both hands to check the inner elbows of your opponent and then drive the head in. Because we're a bit further away, instead of a normal drop headbutt, we're gonna use a thrust headbutt. So we're gonna guard the arms, bend our weight, and drive forward and up, okay? So from here, we've hit, I've checked the arms, I've got my head lower than yours. Okay, so you've got your distraction, your kazushi, so you faint, you hit, then either lead off, move set, or check and headbutt. So all in now, all together. Faint, kick, lead off. Faint, kick, move set. Faint, kick, headbutt. Give that a bit of a play. Get used to mixing up your groin shot with things that can immediately follow up and cause lasting damage. Groin kick causes pain. Really, you wanna cause extra damage with your percussive strikes. Don't always see it as a game changer or a game ender and get used to having to rely on different ranges depending on where you are. Because after you kick, you might lean into you or away from you. So be ready to follow up and counter with whatever else you need. That's some of the practical ways we use Savat in our Bartitsu. Hope you found it useful. Thank you.